Hey guys, today I am going to talk about a video Alpha Investments made about vintage magic boxes being, you no, know, pretty bad. The market has absolutely collapsed. Uh, if you were in the vintage box market, you'd be lucky to, I mean, lose 60%, 70% from the height. Now again, not everyone bought from the height, but no matter where you bought, Today is kind of a low for vintage magic boxes. He uses a few examples, Urge's Saga, Legacy, Destiny, very premier, I mean, top tier, weather light and so on. So if you're interested in vintage investments, uh, right now would be a interesting, it's, it's an interesting point because it's so low that it could get lower. <laughs> And that's what I'm making this video on. I'm going to explain why vintage box investment makes no sense today. So when I was a kid, I grew up with revised. For me to buy a box revised is not really worth it. Uh, I, I do hope that they reprint cards. Now, the fact that the vintage sealed box market has absolutely collapsed may be a opportunity to reprint reserve list cards. Who knows? Um, I, I don't know. Um, I cannot predict the future. I don't work at Wizard of the Coast, but it is an interesting thing to think over, at least as a exercise if you're, you're into that type of stuff. Now, on top of Magic the Gathering vintage boxes going down, Magic the Gathering vintage in general is down. The Black Lotus buy list on Dave and Adams was, I think, 16000 18000 uh, for near mint, and now it is all the way down to twelve thousand uh, dollars, which is unfortunate because I bought it when it was around fifteen thousand for near mint. And my copy, even though it's not near mint, I purchased for over twelve thousand, almost thirteen thousand dollars. So, yeah, <laughs> a lot of the things that I purchased a year ago, in hindsight, look incredibly silly from sealed boxes to. Lotuses, the Power Nine, uh, this type of stuff does not have long term stand. How can I put it? The one of one ring is getting all the hype, and rightfully so. It is a one of one ring, and this is the future of Magic. It's going to be modern cards that have massive appeal, like other IPs, the Lord of the Rings, huge IP. Huge fan base. We can argue whether or not their fan base is being treated correctly, but I don't think we can argue that Lord of the Rings one on one ring versus the Black Lotus Unlimited. You you take the one on one ring, even a Beta Black Lotus. You probably take the one on one ring. Even Alpha Black Lotus. Unfortunately, you would take the one on one ring because there's already a million dollar bounty on it. Where a near mint Alpha PSA ten. Alpha Black Lotus goes between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars. Last time I checked, uh, the price decline. A lot of this has to do with the future of Magic. It is bleak. It is not uh, a investable entity, in my opinion. Now, here here's a problem. The problem is the sunken cost fallacy, and even if you are aware that this is the mental problem you're having, it's still kind of hard to go past. If you purchase so many of these vintage boxes and now you are you are um, losing a lot of money, I mean, you're losing a, a blank ton of money on them. Can you really, can you really, really, like it, it takes somebody really strong to say, hey, I'm going to sell out because I think it's going to continue to go down. Or do you just hold and hope for a miracle? I don't know. I mean, it's uh, quite compelling. It's very very fascinating. I, I'm not going to lie to you. This stuff is the decline of magic vintage prices. I'm not happy with because I'm losing a lot of money. But it's what had to happen. The cards were too expensive. The prices were out of control. Vintage cards. There is no need for vintage cards to be this price. And in my personal opinion... This might be, even though I'm losing money, I believe this will be a good thing because they may release the reserve list. It, right now, a great opportunity has occurred. A lot of these boxes Rudy's talking about, Weatherlight, Tempest, Urza Saga, Urza's Legacy, Destiny, they have reserve list cards. And if the box price goes down and the collectability is less, then 
supposedly the collectors will probably be less butthurt when they do reprint the stuff. Anyway, my main takeaway, and I just kind of want you guys to understand this, is this is not a liquid investment. I don't know if this is a real investment. Uh, I look at magic cards. I look at sealed boxes. There was always this idea, oh, sealed boxes, sealed vintage, vintage cards. They will go up in price. I don't believe that is true. I believe, like Rudy said, it can stagnate for a long time or even continue to go down in price. The, the main, the core problem I have, and this is a big mindset block, is I sunk so much money into it, I can't get out. It's, it's the heavy bags, which Rudy's referring to. When you have this many heavy bags into it, all you can do is stop buying more. I can tell you that the heaviest bag holder may not even been, be Rudy. I think it's Dave and Adams. When I was buying these boxes, the Dave and Adams buy list was crazy high. Like, unbelievably high. Uh, like un un unreasonably high value. So a box could be 140 on TCG player and then uh, David Adams was like buy this thing for 140. And obviously everyone wanted to use that. I'm stuck with these boxes. I think I'm just going to have to open them and you know have fun with uh, the girlfriend opening them and uh, getting maybe her to she's going I'm trying to get her to do some Pokemon. She doesn't collect cards. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't see else, any other way to get rid of them. They're just kind of stuck on you, and, and they're going to be stuck on you for a long time unless there is a, a miracle, unless something crazy happens and uh, all of a sudden that the cards are in high demand, these boxes are high demand. It is what it is, and unfortunately, it's not looking good for people who have boxes uh, in these vintage boxes, and the older the box... There's just not a person who's going to buy them. Simply put, there's not an individual who's like, man, I, I wish I could get my hands on that box. No, there are, is nobody willing to buy them. And that's the problem. The problem is if you have a hot potato and people, the investors are buying it because then that investor bought it and this investor bought it, then who actually wants it? You know, I actually saw this with Rolex, the, the Rolex market. You go to a uh, Rolex dealership exhibit. One dealership buys it. Another another dealer buys it. And they sell it to another dealer. That dealer sells for another deal. That dealer sells for another dealer and so on. And then you're just like, wait a second. This Rolex went from $10,000 to $40,000 and never, never exchanged hands with anyone who actually wanted to wear the watch. My God, like it's, um, man, it's tough. You know, it is, um, it is very, very, very tough to be in this position because you are a bag holder and you're getting effed, but like, what can you do? I don't know what you can do. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Bye guys.